morning, my friends. Today, I am making Romano cheese. <laughs> I won't do that the whole time. I've made this cheese a couple times. It's easy, it's pretty quick. I think it will serve the purposes that I want to do, which are, I want to have a molded cheese that is well knitted together, and then I'm going to bandage wrap it with large soaked cheesecloth and let it age because I just did that recently with a cheddar and it is far superior to other cheddars that I've done. This Romano is a thermophilic cheese, which means it goes up to a high temperature of 116 degrees. It's similar to Parmesan, but it's full fat. So maybe it will be better. Before we could start on the cheese, we had to empty my cheese pot, which has spent the whole week holding a sour cherry mead that I am fermenting and now my cheese pot is cleaned up and I am ready to make cheese. I got my recipe from this cookbook, which is excellent. Here's the Romano. There's already about two gallons of uh, fresh milk in there. I'm using full fat Jersey milk or our raw milk from our cows. Plus I'm adding a quart of heavy whipping cream from the store, which means that I will then add the calcium chloride because I'm using a store product that has been pasteurized. I'm gonna heat this up to 90 degrees. This will probably take about 30 minutes to get that high. I will start it out at 20, just so I don't forget to come check it. I make my own calcium chloride solution. Super easy, you can do it. Saves a ton of money, right here's the link. Make your own, so worth it. Lasts forever in the fridge. I think it's usually a quarter teaspoon per gallon of milk. I'm just gonna put in a teaspoon and a half, just enough to, you know, strengthen the milk a little bit. And you dilute it with a little bit of cold water. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and add it to the milk right now. The milk is still heating up and I need to stir it and temp it. And I'm just gonna add the calcium chloride now because I wanna keep things moving. I'm also making yogurt this morning. I had some older milks that were like a week old. I didn't wanna put it in the cheese, but I need yogurt. It's not enough. I really prefer to do like this much and it's only a gallon and a half, but. You do what you gotta do when you gotta do it. I've always used my own homemade yogurt when I make Romano cheese. Today I'm using Clabber culture because I have switched to Clabber culture because it makes a far superior cheese. Clabber is a raw milk that has been allowed to sour at room temperature and it thickens up like a yogurt. You can keep it going with pasteurized milk. I just haven't done that so I can't speak to that personally but people say you can. But this is what it looks like. It's just thick and gloopy. Bloop, bloop, bloop. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> Mm, tangy and buttery. It's a quarter cup per gallon of milk, so I'm just gonna put this whole amount in. I, I already scooped some out and put it in another jar and added milk to it to keep it going. I feed it every day. So yeah, shake it up. So now it's all liquidy. And once this reaches 90 degrees, I will add it to the pot. The other thing this recipe calls for is lay paste to give it that uh, bite, that sharp bite. Do not use lay paste powder. Lay paste powder is horrible. It ruins cheese. It makes it taste like vomit. You know, after you throw up, you get that like acid flavor in the back of your throat. That's what light paste makes my cheeses taste like. I do use it in soft cheeses, like adding it to mozzarella, but the aged cheeses, it just ruins them. Why bother? And we're at 90. I'm gonna cut the heat on that. And now I'm going to add clabber culture. This is a fast culturing cheese. It will set up here for 10 minutes and then we add the rennet, so it does not take very long. This is the rennet I get from New England Cheese Making Supply. I'm gonna use one and a half teaspoons. The recipe calls for a half teaspoon per every two gallons of milk. I'm using almost eight gallons of milk. So technically I should be using two teaspoons, but I always dial back my rennet. I found that it just is better that way. Then you dilute the rennet with a little bit of water. And it is really dark today because a rainstorm has blown up. We're just gonna to have to turn on artificial light. My apologies. And you stir for no longer than 30 to 45 seconds. I can see it's thickening up a little bit. So I'm gonna slow it down. This is gonna set up for 30 minutes. Time to check for a clean break. That looks lovely. You're first supposed to cut this in one inch columns and then let it rest for about three minutes, just the heel before you cut it with the whisk. So you can see the whey starting to form here. So now I'm gonna take my stainless steel whisk and just break it up. First thing I'm going to do is take out some of the whey because otherwise it will be too hard to stir this. I'm going to stir this for 10 minutes off heat just to break up any large curds 
and make sure it's all pretty uniform before we start the cooking process. It's been only five minutes and I think everything's broken up well enough. It's kind of free form and loose. So I'm going to turn the heat on low for the next 50 minutes and I'm going to stir and I'm going to raise this to 116 degrees. All right, I'm halfway through and this is what the curd looks like. They feel more individualized. They feel smaller. The kettle's definitely getting hotter. It's about 102 degrees. They're still wet. They're getting a little bit less shiny, a little bit more matte. They're soft. There's no squeakiness to them. The whey seems very milky to me. I wonder if this would be a good one for making ricotta. What I'm doing is kind of scraping my fingers around the bottom like this, and I'm pulling up the warmer curds from the bottom, swirling them towards the top to distribute the heat. If I find clumps that are knitting together, I just kind of like ruffle them apart like that. And it is now at 106 degrees. It's beginning to be painfully hot. 110, it's about the highest you can go with any comfort. 116, you can bear, but it, it's pretty freaking hot. These curds feel super small right now. It feels like I have nothing in this pot. It always makes me feel a little bit paranoid at this point. Like I'm only gonna get a little tiny disc of cheese. It's gonna look like a Frisbee, but then I usually get more. They're really small curds. They're not rubbery yet. Still no squeak, still tastes fragile and soft. I'm at 110 degrees and it's getting painful. My hand is feeling reddish and tingly. The curds feel like there's none here. It's kind of depressing. Let's do the squeeze test and see how this is working. Squeeze it pretty hard. And then, yeah, it's holding together and it's crumbling apart. I'm gonna say this is good enough. We're gonna cut the heat because I still don't understand the purpose of going so high. Parmesan goes up to like 125 degrees or something. Why do I keep going that high? I know there's reasons. I just don't understand them because the curds are cooked. Does a few extra degrees really make that much of a difference? Probably. I mean, any real cheesemaker will tell you it does, but I'm not a real cheesemaker. I'm just messing around in my kitchen. At this point, I am supposed to just continue to stir the curds for 30 minutes to cook them more. They're going to disappear. They're just going to turn into sand and go down the drain. It just I'm back. My hand is getting tired. It's really hot. I'm going to wash my arm, hand, clean up, and then just stir with a spoon for the last little bit. And I'm probably only going to stir every several minutes because the curds are not sticking together that hard right now. They're just free floating bits of sand. Also, it's squeaking now. So after this 50 minute heat up to 110, the curds have now gotten to the squeaky point and they are delicious. They're still really juicy. They're not hard, but they squeak. Can you see the difference in my skin color? This is all pink because of the um, heat. And this is my regular color. So yeah, it's kind of hot. For this next 30 minutes, I have this one set right here for it's now 25 minutes left. And then I set the microwave timer for three minutes. And then every time it dings, I will come back and stir with a spoon. You can wet your cheesecloth with hot whey or with hot water, and I often spray it down, especially with thermophilic cheeses. I will spray it down with the vinegar solution because that keeps it from sticking to the cheeses. Thermophilic cheeses tend to stick to the cheesecloth more than mesophilic cheeses. This is 50% white vinegar and 50% water. Wring out any excess. Now you have a pickle rag. They do not knit together when they're sitting here, which surprises me because it's so warm, but they tend to stay fairly loose and separate. Um, you can see that they are matte. See how they are not shiny anymore. Just squeeze it. They hold together and they crumble up. And let's taste and see if they're squeaky. Mm -hmm. They squeak. But they do taste moist. They're not quite rubbery. I mean, they're rubbery, but they're not as rubbery as other things. And they taste creamy, probably because of the extra cream. That's that. So we just pour it off the way into there. And here is the curd. It actually looks like a fair bit of curd. I'm kind of pleased. These are knitting together, so I'm just going to pull them out like this. curds are the whole way up to here. So I'm going to let this just sit for a little bit as it drains down to the level. All right, so the Romano cheese is actually only pressed for four hours approximately and at a lower pressure than you would think for being, I don't know, it, to me it just seems pretty light. So it is supposed to be like 30 minutes flip, 30 minutes flip, hour flip, hour flip, hour, boom, into the brine pretty quick and it only goes up to 15 pounds of pressure. So this is barely any pressure. This has come down to the level of the 
mold. So I'm gonna take this part out and I'm going to let this go very low pressure, five or 10 pounds for about half an hour. I'm pushing down a lot harder though as I get the lid into the mold. It says 30 pounds of pressure, but that's pretty light. And there's just a little bit of whey trickling out. So I'll come back in 30 minutes. I think I actually had curd in the kettle more than I realized. Let it go for another 30 minutes. I have cheesecloth somewhere in this house. I can't find it anywhere. I have lost it. So I got more. There'll be a link in the description box if you want to buy some for yourself. This just came a few minutes ago. I'm gonna cut these cheesecloths into uh, rectangles, the right size that I want, and then I'm gonna wash them and dry them today so that they are ready to go. It's gonna be a few days, but I wanna get this all ready to go so I don't have to think about this part anymore. So I'm just going to cut and tear. So you start the cheesecloth like that, and then you rip. This is one time use cheesecloth because once you add the lard to it and let it get all moldy, it's going to be quite gross and you will throw it out. So there's one. I'm going to do a bunch of these and see it's going to lay over the cheese and I should probably need between six and eight of these per cheese. Here's the cloth that I have left over. I'm going to put that with my cheese making stuff so I do not forget where I put it and I have one, two, eight bandages. That should be plenty. So now I'm going to go wash these. Some detergent. knitting together well. It has three more hours to press. I'm going to flip it every hour. I'm going to do this at medium pressure. I'm doing it a little bit harder because I want to. I think it'll be better that way. Better knitted and a more firm cheese. So that right there is 35, 40 pounds. I don't see whey coming out, so it doesn't feel like it's too hard. This is not knitting together terribly well. There's still gaps. I'm going to increase the pressure even though they don't say to do that. When you make your own cheese at home, you get to break the rules. 50 pounds. That is looking much better. Still has a little bit of some gaps, but we have another hour to go. I might leave it in for two hours just to be on the safe side. Gonna keep it right around 45, 50 pounds. Another hour or two. Oh, look at that. It's knitted together much better. And I'm gonna weigh it. Eight pounds, 13 ounces. Ding, 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 ding. Four hours per pound of cheese. So we're gonna go with approximately 35 hours. This cheese isn't that hard pressed, so it will probably absorb the salt faster. It's actually riding a little bit high in the brine, which doesn't surprise me since it's so loosely pressed. A bit more salt. how much is in there because that shows how much uh, whey got out of the cheese. Flipping the cheese. Action. Third cheese flipping. Action. Cut.
This is now beginning to get buttery a little bit, so it is very soon time to bandage wrap this. All right, friends, we're wrapping this Romano today. Apologies for the lawnmower in the background. Summertime. It still feels a little bit tacky. The rind on the side is harder than the rind on the top or the bottom, but I feel like this is a well-developed rind, and I'm beginning to get some grease on my hands because of the warm weather, and that's just what happens after a while. So, we's gonna wrap it. The idea is to just get this wrapped in as many layers as we need to so that it ages properly. So I was just melting some lard. I have two kinds of lard from the grocery store, and I'm just gonna like start smacking this on. Oh, that mower is driving me nuts. This one I'm going to dip in. I think that may help it better. Um, John, can you put this back on the stove and turn the heat on briefly? And then this is the last one. I think this will be eight. Oh, that's hot. And now we're just going to pile on the last of the lard. Get it all kicked on really good. This is not hardening up as fast right away because the cheese was at room temperature and not cold like the Darby cheddar that I did. So it's not locking in and getting hard as fast as it was before, which is okay. Well, I've read that people will just put lard on their cheeses or without the bandages and that creates a seal against molds. I kind of think that would just be gross, like, but maybe it's not. See that little bubble right there? That concerns me. Like that means there's air and I do not want air in here. This is probably a little bit more lard than I do need because I'm just rubbing on extra, but I want to use it up. I want to get it out of my fridge. Probably almost a full pound on this cheese, and this cheese is large, so there's more surface area. Isn't that pretty? I think that's good. So I'm going to write Romano and the date, and I'm going to stick it on the plate, not on the cheese this time. There's where it's gonna live for three to 12 months. All right, here's the Romano. Oh, it's heavy, it's a big one. Look, do you see the water droplets on here? So what I do, I just dump that off this paper and this Romano, it's getting a little bit of yellow on there. It's pretty gnarly, but it's not bad. It feels, still feels firm. You flip it. And little bits of the lard has come off and stuck on the mat, but it's it's so saturated that I'm not worried about it. Is that soft? No, nope, it's just the lard that's soft. Cheese feels really good. Some of the fabric is like lifting up a little bit, but it's fine. So just continue aging that. It's time to turn the Romano. It's looking a little bit gnarly. Black. I don't know what that yellow is. The fridge smells like rancid lard, but the cheese feels firm. And I'm just going to keep saying it's good enough. It's been four months and I want to go a little longer, but I might cave in and taste it soon. See, that feels a little squidgy right there, but I think that's just a bubble in the fabric. It actually doesn't smell bad. It just smells, I don't know. Today's the day. We're going to open this baby. Look how weird it is. It's orange, it's yellow, it's black, it's blue, it's gray, it's fuzzy, it's white, it's red. Oh, look at that mold that fell down through there. That's blue mold. Interesting. There's the mat. Fairly gross. Feels firm. <laughs> Go. Woohoo! Ta da! That's like hard. Like it dried out. There wasn't enough protection there. Can you help me for a second? Can me the cheese thingy? Oh, actually, I can get it. I'm gonna use this to scrape off. Oh, brilliant! I'm so brilliant! I'm so happy. Look at that. Get yourself a pastry thing. Okay, if you haven't yet subscribed, this makes, this earns me a subscription and send money. And this is better than the metal ones for this situation because this bit is a little bit bendy 
and so it can curve and it doesn't gouge the cheese unless you want it to gouge the cheese. It's not sharp. You could probably also do this with a thick manila envelope or some poster paper and use that as your guide or a ruler that is plastic and flimsy. And this is also much better because the cheese does not have holes all through it compared to the ale cheddar that has the holes and the other regular cheddar. Having a smooth cheese makes a big difference. I said that there was a pound of lard on this cheese and I'm not scraping off a pound so I think the majority of it is in the wrap. There's really not much waste. Just for funsies, let's see how much these scraps weigh. 12 ounces. I guess we can assume that I had like at least 10 ounces of lard. And for more funsies, let's weigh the cheese. How much did I actually get? I'm sure I'll cut away a little bit more as I go along, but for now, eight pounds, 1.7 ounces. Woohoo. And now we cut. Oof. Boom. There is a Romano cheese. It smells delicious. It looks delicious. Look, you can see the rind around the edge right there. And it's a little bit soft to the touch, like a little, it's not hard, it doesn't feel dry. I don't think this is a dry cheese. Let's see. There you go, see? That's how pretty it is. It's lovely. Cuts nice, creamy smooth. Wow. This is kind of perfection, not to like, brag or anything. It's creamy, it's buttery, it's soft. It's not like a cheddar, it's mild. Sheep's milk Romano is usually sharp and this does not taste sharp, this is mild, but it's only been four months so I suppose it will get sharper as it goes. Let me try it. Oh, what is it? You gotta get in the picture. <coughs> Stop coughing, that's gross. <coughs> what is it? Romano. It's a cheese. Yeah. Tastes like any other cheese. Like what kind of any other cheese? Any other cheese, sharp cheese. You think it's sharp? Mm -hmm. It's not sharp, it's mild. It's sharp. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It's not sharp. She doesn't know. It's not sharp. Kind of grainy. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. There's no graininess. Mm -hmm. There's like that little, little graininess to it. There's not any graininess. Get out. Okay, go. You're done. You don't know how to um, interpret cheeses. I do. She just thinks she's right all the time, which is not true. Totally true. Tasting the rind now. I get a little bit of that fridge flavor. <laughs> that sounds so gross. But it doesn't bother me. Like, it doesn't taste bad. It's just a thing. It's a really good cheese. And it is not grainy. She really doesn't know. This is one I will stand by. I'm standing by it. And I'll package these up into backpack packages and we will be having Romano for the next few months. Romano. I didn't do it till the whole way to the end. You gotta be proud of me. <laughs> Eating Romano. Mm. Nico, come here! I'm gonna see what the boy thinks about this. Come taste it. What's up, people? Here we are today eating some... Romano. Hello, everyone. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Action. Hello, everyone. Here we are today eating Romano cheese. Romano? Yes! Eat it! Hello ladies and gentlemen, here we are today eating Romano cheese. Also, subscribe and follow because it's a pretty good channel. Thanks for the vote of confidence. What do you think about Shut the cheese? Up. You missed the scene. It tastes like, um... Nothing. <laughs> oh my word! Sweet. That is not true! Um, it's pretty creamy. It doesn't taste like anything other than cheese. Is it sharp or mild? Sweet? Salty? Bitter? Mm. Acidic? It's a teeny bit like cheddar. A little sharp. Like my fashion choices? Okay, like we're done. Subscribe. We're done, we're done, we're done. Down below, just put that like. Over the last few days, I have been editing the video of this Romano cheese up through now. And I was noticing in my stirring and cooking process, I made a lot of notes about the curds, how they felt, how they tasted, how they behaved. I shortened the cooking times, I lowered the temp. I did things based on how it felt. And yet I followed the method more or less for thermophilic cheese. And I got this and this is good. So I think I'm kind of gonna bookmark this Romano cheese in my mind. How I did the curds is a really good touchstone for thermophilic cheeses, like what to look for. Eventually I'd like to do a whole video about stirring and cooking and stuff, but I still am not consistent. I still don't know exactly. This one though is one to springboard from, I think, because it turned out really, really good.